Lord Zerus. Is this thing recording? Oh, oh, okay, good. Hi guys, this is Lord Zerus. Welcome to my breakfast nook uh, in my castle. If you look from outside, this is totally a castle. So the voices in my head were like, hey Lord Zerus, you should do an unboxing video. And I was like, unboxing video? What's that? And so the voices replied, it's these videos that people make when they open up boxes that they got and then put it up on YouTube. And then I was like, what? I have so many questions. Like, well, why would anyone do that? And then the voices in my head were like, well, because some people find it interesting. I'm like, well, who finds that interesting? Well, you know, people, I don't know. Why would anybody watch that? That's so weird. And also, what's YouTube? And they were like, well, it's this file sharing platform and stuff on the internet. And I was like, what's the internet? And they're like, well, you know, that was a very long and drawn out conversation. So let's not get into that right now. Anyway, so I got a bunch of boxes. And here's one that I've been most anxious to open up right here. So this box is from my good friends, a classic handicraft. And they are based out in Meerut in India. And they're my armors. They're always making me good stuff. So it's good stuff to wear and put on in battle. So I'm opening this up right now. Really excited. All right, I'll see if I can do this. Can you see? There we go. Again, apologize for my relative nudity. I just woke up. I was in bed just a minute ago, so that's why I'm not all geared up. Anyway, here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh man, this thing's heavy. Oh, no wonder, it's got gauntlets inside. Oh, wow. Cool. No hands. Wow. Oh boy, this thing is beautiful. I was actually surprised all this stuff even fit in this box. I was like, that, that box doesn't look big enough to fit my head in. Get that. Let's get that box out of the way. All right, so now let's take a look at some of this stuff. Now, go away, plastic bag. Stop bothering me. All right, look. Oh, wow. Now, when I had ordered this helmet, I had asked for an Aventail. But I think, uh, I don't know, there was some design issues, so they gave me this instead. I look forward to seeing how this fits. It looks, it looks nice, and I like the chain mail. Oh, it's nice. It looks really nice. Looks like I can protect my neck from those errant blows right there. But I gotta see, I gotta test this padding to see if it's enough padding. Might need to add some extra concussion padding. Protect my noggin. Oh, anyway, there goes that thing. I'm gonna scratch up my table, just like I scratched up the trunk of Lady Sirsteen's car. <laughs> Good times. Ugh. That was another story involving a helmet. I'll tell you that one later. Ugh. There we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's a beautiful helmet. I like that. Oh, thanks, guys. It's beautiful work. Oh, my God, it's amazing. I got to try that on. Gonna be the new face of Lord Zerus. All right, well, I wanted to bring over this helmet to show you guys. This is my old helmet. You guys probably recognize this from my other videos. Uh, I actually had a lot of significant problems with this helmet. Uh, well, for one, uh, the construction was not very good because this is an off-the-rack kind of a helmet. It, uh, starting to get, I don't know if you can see that, starting to get a big crack right there in the top from too many blows of the noggin. And then I did have a lot of problems because this helmet is actually too small for me. A lot of problems securing it to my head. Eventually this, uh, uh, using a chin strap with some paracord ended up being the best, most reliable solution. But of course the paracord is always stretching, so that is its own problem. But uh, this ended up being the most comfortable and solution. There also wasn't enough room in there for padding, which was a problem, kind of a, a risk for concussion. And then the, the other problem was that the back of this helmet was too high. So uh, I went to a tournament and uh, the marshals almost didn't let me compete because there was, there was a space in there for the rattan to get into my, under my helmet. So I jerry-rigged this. This is actually a piece of a pauldron that I dismantled and I added on there. I just put some, uh, screwed some uh, leather in there and put this, drape it over my neck. And it did close that gap, but it also kind of not very elegant, didn't fit very well. So, and kind of made it more difficult to carry the helmet and put it on. So that was my solution. So anyway, that's the old helmet. And also you can see the helmet had this kind of annoying, these hinges on it. 
which were theoretically good because it would have let me open the helmet from the side. But uh, these pins, once they took a couple of hits, they were just they're just locked in there permanently now because you can't take them out. And then when I could, when I did take them out, they were a pain in the butt to put back in. So that wasn't I didn't find that to be very very good. I did like the design overall design of the helmet, but uh, practically speaking, it had a lot of problems. So I'm very eager to try this new helmet. So this helmet is thicker, stronger. It's made of better material. This, uh, the old helmet was mild steel. This helmet is uh, 410 stainless, has some of the anti-corrosive properties of stainless steel, but also the, you know, the strength and flexibility of uh, carbon steel. So um, I'm going to mess with that later. I'm going to try it on, uh, see how it fits, see what kind of padding it needs. But uh, uh, I asked these guys to do a design that I literally liked. Uh, the original armor. I don't usually like doing that. I don't really like having the armor copy other designs, but uh, the, my other armor, who was still making my legs, uh, it's taken kind of a long time, and uh, he was telling me that it was going to be months and months before I could even order a helmet. So uh, I had these other guys on, uh, waiting around. They were, you know, they, they wanted work, so I was like, hey, why don't you guys try us? So I had them make the design. I had to also make them do some special uh, improvements, like I have them put these eye holes up here so I can see the sneaky, those sneaky tall guys they are always hiding above my eyesight so I can see them more easily. All right, my initial impressions of this new helmet is it's very nice, very beautiful. Uh, and, you know, these guys uh, classic, at a classic handicraft, they sent me a video of themselves wailing on this helmet with an axe. And uh, it's, I got to say, it's pretty impressive. Um, now, that video doesn't didn't portray how thick this material truly is. I mean, uh, I mean, I knew they were making it out of 10 gauge steel, but uh, I didn't realize it. Now seeing it in person, it looks a lot different than it did in the video that they sent me. And uh, in the video they sent me, it was just kind of popping around because uh, they were hitting it with the ax. Uh, and it kind of, uh, it, it looked not as thick as it, but it's, seeing it in person, it looks a lot more sturdy, uh, you know, a lot more dense, so heavier. It's heavier than that other helmet for sure. Now, I just uh, had a moment to kind of play around with this. So this visor is a little tough to lift to keep up in an open position. It is a nice thick vi visor though. I have no worries about that, you know, uh, about the strength of this. Is this thing is, this thing is solid. It's like a brick wall. But, uh, you know, it's, it is important to be able to have the ability to lift this visor and have it stay in the upright position. Maybe over time that'll work itself out. For right now, I'm having kind of a heck, heck of a time lifting it up and keeping it up in the upright position. Uh, also, alternately, it seems a little tough to, to close it all the way. And it has to be closed all the way in order to utilize those eye holes. Because otherwise, the, uh, the, the brow will get in the way of the visibility, canceling out the benefit of that. So that'll hopefully, maybe if I oil up these hinges, maybe that'll, that'll work itself out. Now looking on the inside of this helmet, it does have a nice, a nice suspension liner in there. It's got a lot of chin straps, a lot of options for chin straps, which is nice. Anyway, all right. So there's that, there's the helmet. Let's move on. And here are some new gauntlets. I'm all, I guess I'll try, I'm gonna try these new gauntlets, these clamshells. This is the style I really like. Yeah, check those out. I feel like I can punch through a brick wall with these. Mm, a little bit, movement's a little bit more limited. Now, just as a note, those other gauntlets that I'm wearing, those are just my everyday gauntlets. I don't wear those in the battle because they're not up to standards. They're not, they're not up to SCA standards. So these actually are up to SCA standards, and these are, they do uh, provide a lot more protection. And I suspect that without these, I won't have to use a shield basket uh, and I am anticipating not having to use a, uh, a hilt basket either, a basket hilt. So I'm gonna go uh, do switch to a single handed weapons with no, with the, uh, with the quillens instead of the shield basket. All right, so this stuff once again, brought to you by my friends at A Classic Handicraft. Make sure to check them out. They're really great, they're reasonably priced. Uh, they're fast, they do good work. These guys, I'm really eager to try on this helmet and to uh, you know to get a prep for battle. All right, guys, this has been Lord Zerus. Uh, don't forget, if you want to help me out, like and subscribe, and also read the tale of the Order of the Blue Maiden. 
This book is available on Amazon, iTunes, Kobo, and Barnes and Nobles. 20 years in the making, you'll never. How's it go? What's the slogan? I forgot. 20 years in the making, you've never heard a tale like this.